My name is Michelle Ward. I'm a PhD candidate here at UQ. Um, my supervisors are Jonathan Burrow, Steve Cottingham, and James Watson. Um, and this work was um, my first chapter for my PhD, um, and it was done in co collaboration with a bunch of other really great um, scientists from WCS. Um, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, WCS, uh, WWF, and the Australian Conservation Foundation. Um, so the Australian extinction crisis, as we know, Australia has one of the worst extinction crises in the world. Since European settlement, we've had at least 90 species go extinct, um, including this cute little guy. Does anyone know who that is? Or what species that is? No, angel? The bramble came now me. So he was declared extinct. Oh, it's not. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, so... As Deb and Rebel mentioned, the, um, our species are so imperiled and there's lots of different drivers causing this um, sort of extinction crisis. A few of those are, a few of those reasons are, um, you know, invasive species, um, disease. The main one though is um, habitat loss, so native, native vegetation loss. Um, and the key act within Australia to protect that environment and to conserve species is the EPBC Act. So the key objective is to protect and conserve biodiversity. Um, as Deb mentioned, there are nine different matters of national environmental significance which it tries to sort of protect and regulate. These include threatened species, um, like koalas, national heritage places, migratory species, world heritage places, threatened ecological communities. There's a huge range of all these places that we absolutely love and want to protect. Under the Act, um, an action will require um, the approval from the minister if the action has, will have, or is likely to have a significant impact on a matter of national environmental significance. So the act sort of works like this. So if you follow me down the left here, say for example, I'm a landholder and I want to clear maybe 50 hectares of wild habitat. I would do a self-assessment and ask myself, right, is um, this action going to have a significant impact on a matter of national environmental significance like the koala. If I think yes, then I will go ahead to the federal government's website and fill in a referral. Um, that will then be sent to the minister who will decide absolutely not, it's unacceptable. Perhaps the minister will decide that it is a controlled action and it requires further assessment, which then can either be um, not approved or approved with, action, uh, with conditions or approved just as it is. As it is. Um, the third choice that the minister can make is that it's not a controlled action. So as it's written, where it is, it can go ahead. Um, so that's sort of how it works. This is all obviously conditional of the first step, which is me as the proponent saying, yes, it is self I'm going to do the self-assessment and, uh, and proceed with the, with the referral. So this particular research asked four questions. The first one was how much threatened species habitat has been lost since the inauguration of the Act. So back in 1999, all the way up to 2017, how much um, threatened species has been lost, uh, threatened species habitat has been lost. Of that loss um, that has occurred, how much has been regulated or referred to the EPBC Act? Which sectors are participating in the Act and which aren't? Um, and is the Act enforced when unregulated habitat um, is lost? So we... For nerdy people, I'll just run through some methods. So we collected a bunch of different data sets. We processed that data, so finding where um, a habitat exists, um, excluding any areas that were um, lost before the, the act was inaugurated. We didn't include any fire, loss from fire. So this is purely loss from land clearing. More data processing, so we used only known to occur and likely to occur um, species habitats. Um, and the federal government also offer a spatial data set where all the referrals um, were, were sent in. So it's just sort of like a spatial map of all the referrals that um, have existed from 1999 up until 2017. And these are the results. So. From, yeah, from the start of the, of the inauguration of the EPBC Act all the way up until 2017, 7.7 .7 million hectares of threatened species habitat has been lost. So that's equivalent to about 4 million Melbourne cricket grounds, MCGs. 
What's really horrifying though is that 93% of that loss was unregulated, so it was lost without referral. So all the red areas are places that have been cleared with no referral. The blue is that it has been referred to the federal government and the federal government has given it a tick of approval for clearing. What's really important to remember is that this is clearing only from 2000 or 1999. Um, we have to remember that Australia has experienced a lot of habitat loss before this date. Here are some species that have been most impacted. So we've got things like the red goshawk, um, ghost bat, starfinch, even the koala, our most beloved iconic species, um, isn't immune to this um, threatened, um, threatened um, habitat, this habitat loss. loss. Um, um, when, when we look, look at species, species proportional loss, um, some things have lost about 25% in the last sort of 17 years. Uh, things like the Mount Cooper striped stripe skink, um, April's favourite little bird, the southern uh, black-footed finch, has also lost about 11% of its habitat. So another key result that came out of our work was um, this idea that referrals are investigated individually. So say, for example, I'm a landholder and I want to clear 20 hectares. In, in the referral of that or the assessment of that, of that action, perhaps it doesn't look like a significant impact. But if I do it and April does it and everyone in this room clears 20 hectares, then you get this idea of cumulative impact. So if you can just keep your eye on around maybe North Lakes or inland of Burpengary, I'm just going to flick through. So as you can see, slowly but surely, we lose tiny little fragments of habitat, roads, housing developments, until we get to 2016, and it's basically all gone. So while we know and understand that this broad scale clearing is really disastrous and completely horrific for some of our threatened species, so are these tiny little fragments of loss. So referrals by sector. So these are the, the um, sectors that are participating in the act and putting in referrals and showing us where they're going to clear habitat. Um, so around 21% was, percent was from residential developers, 18% from mining industry. Does anyone know what sector up there is clearing the most land in Australia? Ag? Was I ag? Yes, right. Well done. There'll be a test later. No, <laughs> um, so, so the agricultural, agricultural sector, sector is actually, actually only um, putting in referrals 1.3 percent of the time. So that was interesting. Um, the next thing we looked at was um, so there's lots of habitat being um, being cleared um, over a long period of time. Perhaps there's been some regulation. So we, so we investigated some court cases. Over the 17, 17 years, years that we, that we looked, looked at, at 18, 18 court, court cases, cases um, had been um, had had gone through the system, um, and fines for three point nine million dollars um, for the clearing of three hundred thirty six hectares. Um, Seventy percent of that was for ecological communities. So. The major conclusions from this research was, was that, that the act is, is a not enforced. Um, B, there's no real accountability. Um, C, there seems to be just a systematic failure of government to perform its regulatory duty. And that the EDBC Act is ineffective at protecting habitat, which as we know is absolutely vital if we want to conserve species and preserve them into the future. Um, so just linking this back to the review, um, as Deb mentioned there, if you want to, you can um, you know, participate in the review of the Act. There'll be, I think, 32 questions. Um, is that right? 36? 30. So there's 30 <laughs> odd questions. Um, it's up to you completely, but I think that this research, if you wanted to refer back to it, fits nicely into question five. Um, which elements of the EDBC Act should be priorities for reform? So um, the paper I can perhaps put on EDO's website so you can refer back to it. But some of the key, like the three key things that we are pushing for from this paper is the absolute protection of critical habitat that is enforced, monitored and investigated by the regulator. Um, the second one of those is that unreferred habitat must be monitored and investigated and appropriate enforcement action taking, taking place. So that's what sort of Deb mentioned. 
And then the third one was the documentation of cumulative impact. As we saw, that's really, really important. As well as broad scale clearing, we really need to understand the, the trajectories of common and threatened species. So that's all. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.